I'm so excited to bring up your headliner for the night. The reason we're all here brought together on this beautiful evening. He's so hilarious, so funny, so sweet. I love him. You will too. Make it loud. Keep it up for Josh Waldron. Guys, make it loud for all of my friends that you just saw. Weren't they super funny? All of them super funny. Thank you so much for being here, guys. And keep it going for Don't Tell, for Yard and Sea, for Fruit Smash. Come on. A lot went into me being the most nervous I've ever been. Nah, it's all good. We're back, right? Life is back. Feels good. Yeah. Feels good to be back to uh, wondering what every person thinks about you, right? Because a lot of people just didn't care over the last year. But now you got to care. And I'll help you care. There's actually a way I figured out that you can tell how the world perceives you. It's based on where you get asked for help. Like when I go to the gym, not a lot of people asking for advice. <laughs> no one ever asked for a spot, whatever those are. But the other day, literally the other day, I went into an H&M. Someone gave me a headset, told me to clock in, you know? <laughs> They're like, Josh, you're late. I freaked out. I started folding clothes. <laughs> Too worried about it. Too worried about it. Because I'm, I'm, I'm afraid I'm still like the same douche, right? Does anybody feel like they got better over the last year? Like, I didn't get worse, but I'm still making the same douche mistakes. Like, I got a job during the pandemic on a set, and I never worked on a set before, so I wanted to be locked in. So I got a new routine. I woke up, meditated a little bit, drank some cold brew. And then I crushed up half an Adderall and I got to work, you know, like, I wanted to be locked in. But I'm still the same douche. I forgot that they were doing rapid on-site testing on set. I get there, the nurse puts the swab in my business nostril. <laughs> she pulls it out and she goes, what is this huge blue glob on the end of that swab? And I was like, that. It's about $8, I need it back. Um, <laughs> if it was orange, we would be fighting right now. <laughs> We're all the same douches, not just us normies, the 1%, they're still the same. You guys, you guys remember, Ti Tiger Woods got in another car accident. Yeah, right, he got another accident. How does he, a golfer, not understand the importance of a driver, right? Like, buddy. <laughs> And I don't want to make fun of him. I hope he, I, I think he got hurt really bad. Like, I hope he makes a full recovery. I'm not here to make fun of him. What I want to make fun of are the headline writers from that day, because they did him no favors, right? First article I read about him on ESPN.com. Tiger Woods, in car accident, parenthesis, not drunk. <laughs> That's not fair. That's not fair to Tiger. That'd be like if I'm home all day, and then my girlfriend comes home and is like, what were you doing all day? And I was like, not jacking off. <laughs> Guess what she knows I was doing all day? <laughs> and I want to stop jacking off, too. It's the worst. I'm glad I have a girlfriend. Jacking off saps your motivation. I'm done with it, right? Because there's only two basic, I'm not done with it. There's only two, <laughs> there's only two basic instincts that we as humans, plants, animals, there's only two like instincts we all have and it's survive and reproduce. And as dudes, we shouldn't be jerking off our like instinct to reproduce all the time, right? Like me and this guy, we get boners every morning, okay? <laughs> boners every morning, every single morning, right? And normally, if you're a single dude, you wake up with your boner, you're like, okay, today's the day. I'm gonna write a song, maybe learn a new language. I'm gonna do something that makes a girl wanna help me with this boner. And then I jerk off, I'm like, I don't need anybody. I'm going back to sleep. Oh, I can order food directly to my door? That's what I'm doing today. Nah, but I did, uh, you know, we all had kind of a bad year. I had a, a somewhat lucky year, so I'm actually trying to give back as much as I can. I want to share my luck with the rest of the world, you know? Like, I actually found this website that make, lets you make recurring donations to women-owned small businesses. Yeah. It's called OnlyFans. <laughs> yeah. Turns out, I'm a philanthropist. <laughs> Claimed them on my taxes under Ho Nations, huh? My girlfriend loves that joke. Um, she's great. I'm actually happy to be in a relationship. I don't date a lot. I was actually very bad at dating, right? I was bad at dating. I got ghosted a lot, okay? If you don't know what getting ghosted is, it's when you think you're about to be romantically involved with someone, and then that person chooses to die. <laughs> but I'm an optimistic dude. I put a positive spin on everything that happens to me, right? That girl, she, st or like, uh, she stopped replying to all my texts to hang. 
but she was still liking all my posts and viewing all my stories. So I call that a Casper, because it's a friendly ghost. <laughs> right? Yeah. Still out here helping my numbers, which is all I really wanted. Not very good at dating. I didn't get better at dating until actually I got in more friend zones. Dudes, be, more, be friends with girls. Be OK with friendships with girls, because girls will help you with uh, things that you didn't even know you needed help with. Right? Like texting other girls. They know how they want to be texted. And they got their own little strategies, too. Girls, they have a bunch of little texting strategies. Fellas, did you know that girls, they will text their entire text in the Notes app first? Right? They text their entire text in the Notes app first. Because here's why it's helpful. You text the whole text in Notes, you start to read it, and you're like, oh, I'm a lunatic. I need to delete this and hope it doesn't end up in the cloud, you know? Yeah, I, uh, I, they help you with texting. Like, I remember I was texting this one girl, and my friend comes up to me, and she's like, what are you doing? And I was like, I'm texting the girl. And she's like, yeah, but Josh, that's the hard eyes emoji. You barely know this girl. Send her three pineapples. Let me know what she says. You know, like, <laughs> she had a game plan. No dude is helping you like that. No dude in this room is helping you like that room. No dude is helping you like that. Right? I could ask any dude in this room, what do I send the girl? And he'd be like, uh, your dick. And then hand me my phone back. Like, that's it. <laughs> Try mine. <laughs> you do develop your own strategies, though, over time, right? You develop your own strategies over time. I, uh, I actually develop my own little mood. So what I would do is I match with a girl online dating. And I don't miss online dating. The only thing I miss about online dating is uh, the bios. I think online, that should be a whole like coffee table book, just dating at bios, right? <laughs> Because they're like dating resumes that no one gets right, right? Especially dudes. One of my dude friends was like, what do I put in my bio? And I was like, just put something you think would make a girl interested in you. And he was like, I have a van. I was like, do not put that. <laughs> that is a way different website. <laughs> I never knew what ever got me any matches. I never knew what to put in my bio until I figured out the perfect sentence for a dating app bio for a single dude, right? All I put, the only thing I had for months was, there's no street sweeping in front of my apartment. I started flying off the shelves. I had a girl match me once to not even date. She was like, I'm going on vacation. Can I park in front of your place for like a week? But here was my strategy. Here's what I did eventually. And this, it worked pretty well. I mean, I have a girlfriend now. So it, here's what I would do. Okay, I'd match with a girl. We'd text a little bit, send a couple pineapples. And then once I thought that she, like I wanted to use one of my moves, here's what I would do. I would text her. I would say, hey, what's your Venmo? I'm going to send you 10 bucks. You buy yourself a cup of coffee. If it helps you have a better day, you let me buy the next one in person. Right? Yeah. Fellas, if you're wondering what that sound was, it's all the girls who would have said no to me before. <laughs> Clicking it over to a maybe, right? <laughs> For five bucks! What an investment, right? <laughs> I'm no crypto guy, but it's got to be a better deal. <laughs> I am happy to have a girlfriend. She, uh, she's vegan, so I am now vegan. Um, <laughs> Uh, she, uh, I, uh, she's mostly vegan, like obviously health reasons save the planet, but she's mostly vegan for uh, saving the animals, which I'm down with. But some of the save the animal people get a little too ridiculous, right? With their rules and what they want you to say. Like you guys know PETA, right? The people for the ethical treatment of animals. The, a couple years ago, they released a bunch of animal friendly language that you, are, you should be using to make your animals feel more included. Yeah, this is real. This is on their website. You can look it up. Instead of calling it, uh, instead of bringing home the bacon, now sir, you get to bring home the bagels. And instead of killing two birds with one stone, now all of us get to feed two birds with one scone. <laughs> I know what you're thinking. Scones, bagels, did PETA get under the thumb of big bread? Like, they're all ridiculous. The most ridiculous one of me, and again, this is on the website. You can check it out. The most ridiculous one of me, uh, instead of calling it doggy style, OK, PETA just wants you to call it the best option. Yeah, I don't know. that. <laughs> I was like, babe, that's what Peter said. We should probably do it, right? We should probably, yeah. <laughs> ugh, ugh. Uh, no, we, I do, I do very much enjoy being with her. Um, she, uh, what I figured out, we've been together a while, we have a lot in common. Uh, I figured out that we can't smoke and smash. By the way, I, when I say smash, I mean sex. I'm not like hulking out on her, you know? <laughs> like, smash is my favorite word for sex, right? Before I said smash, I would say bone down. <laughs> Right? And before I said bone down, I was a virgin, so. <laughs> I'm sorry for what I'm about to say, but I knew this one guy a long time ago who would always say that he was, I'm sorry, busting guts, Ugh, right? That's so unnecessary, busting guts, right? And he would bring it up unnecessarily. Hey, what'd you do this weekend? I just busted some guts. Finally, one day I was like, Dad, you cannot talk about mom like that. <laughs> 
Although if he didn't bust guts that one time in the 80s, I wouldn't even be here. So I guess say it. Um, my girlfriend likes to say she's getting dick down, <laughs> right? That's fun, dick down. It implies the, that I am vagging up, you know, which uh, that's fun. That sounds like a video game power up, doesn't it? Yes, I can't smoke and smash. Uh, and she always is trying to smash. She's always trying to have sex, and I am 34, okay? Like, always trying to smash. And uh, yeah, she, I just get a little too high. I can't smoke and smash, you know? And she's always like making little jokes. She'll turn anything into sexual, like regular sentences, she spins sexual, you know? I'll come home, eyes watering, sneezing, runny nose, and she's like, babe, are you okay? I'm like, my allergies are destroying me. She's like, I got something else you could destroy. <laughs> babe, I can't see right now. Well, if you could see, you'd see my pants are off. <laughs> Can't smoke and smash, wish I could, I just get too high. My high thoughts take over everything when I get high. Cannot smoke and smash, she'll get home, we'll smoke, she'll wanna have sex, I'll try. But halfway through, I'm like, man, are stampedes just traffic for horses? And she knows, she can see it on my face. She's like, babe, is it the horse thing again? I'm like, yes. <laughs> And she does dabs, too. Do you guys know what dabs are? Okay, so for those of you who don't know, a dab is if you wanted to make marijuana a felony, okay? <laughs> Out of control, too high, right? Gets off work, babe, let's do a dab. Yes, babe, let's have sex. Absolutely not. You just sedated me. Right? She's like, come on, get a boner. I'm like, I can't get a boner. I'm busy wondering if soup is nighttime cereal. It is not gonna happen. But things are going pretty good. Things are going pretty good recently. Uh, she, used, she, she started using the L word on me. Yeah, she's a lesbian. <laughs> no, she's not lesbian. She's very proudly bisexual. And you know, as a straight dude, you hear your girlfriend's bisexual, you think it's gonna be all threesomes and cupcakes. It's not. It's a trap. Because very quickly, it goes from let's bring in a third to can I peg you? <laughs> so it sounds like a lot of people don't know what pegging is. <laughs> it is when the girl Straps on a dick, and then penetrates the man. Nice thumbs up. Um, <laughs> so that makes pegging my least favorite word for sex. <laughs> and it was, it was like the third girl to gauge my interest in it. After she brought it up, I was like, man, what vibe am I putting out? <laughs> and she actually, she tried to go like Dr. Phil about it. She's like, no, babe, it's like, it's like I know you, you cishet male wouldn't let me do that unless like we were really close and you wanted to get closer. It's like a bonding thing. Doesn't that make sense? And I was like, I guess. And she goes, cool, I ordered it. It'll be here tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I, I'm from a, a small town in Northern California and that's probably the reason I'm like the way I am, you know, <laughs> right? I come from a small town in Northern California and where I'm from, uh, they said, they, they had this phrase that they use a lot. You guys probably recognize it, right? They had this phrase that they use a lot. Uh, it's not my first rodeo. We've all heard it, right? Our whole lives we've heard that. It's not my first rodeo. What is happening at all these first rodeos? <laughs> Somewhere it became like the basis for failure. And anytime someone uses it, they just did something super easy that anybody could do, right? I was at a party once and this guy uh, popped off his bottle cap with a lighter. And I go, that's pretty cool. And he goes, it's not my burn. No, no. I was like, I know, Greg, you have three DUIs. <laughs> you had three rodeos and you lost. <laughs> I, uh, I also like, so in that small town, like I just knew I didn't fit in right away because like I, as I, when I moved away, I gradually lost all like my toxic traits that I got from my small town. I just have one toxic male trait left. I'm very competitive. Right? You hear dudes say that all the time. I'm just really competitive. I can translate it for you. When a dude says, I'm just really competitive, what he means is, I'm about to ruin this trip to Dave and Buster's. <laughs> Hope you bought your egg game because we're getting the Xbox. Uh, where I'm from in NorCal is like this little like West Coast podunk town there. Um, it's very uh, country adjacent, you know? And, uh, and I remember, and, for, and the rodeo thing, it just blows me away because it's like, you hear that and you have never, like I've watched a lot of ESPN, I've watched a lot of Sports Center. I've never seen like a rodeo highlight <laughs> where the announcer's like, all right, we're getting ready for Dale's first rodeo. <laughs> Dale is on the bull, the gate is opening out. Dale is crying, okay, all right. Standard first rodeo stuff here, guys. We're actually gonna cut to commercial, figure out what Dale's got going on at home. <laughs> 
but like I said, very country adjacent. I, you know, it's a. Uh, I remember, you know, now that we're getting a little bit deeper into the relationship, um, we're starting to share share stuff with each other that maybe I wouldn't have told her first couple months. I wouldn't have told other relationships, and I, I had to sit her down and I had to be like, "Okay, I got to tell you something. You're not gonna like it." Um, and I've been trying to shake it my whole life. It's something that was very prevalent in the people that I hung out with. My dad kind of supported it. It was it was weird. I just. <sighs> I like country music. I'm sorry. Oh my God. I am so sorry. Right? Pegging in country, dude. We're bros. Um, <laughs> we're bros. Yeah. I like country music. I do. I like it. I, you know, I guess I get why people don't like it. I didn't fully understand why people didn't like it until I met this girl who was like, I don't like country music because of the accents the singers have. I was like, what do you mean? She goes, I just hear that southern twang and it sounds like racism. And I was like, oh. That's a good point, right? Like, I, I never thought of that. I couldn't stop thinking about it. I was like wondering how powerful that could be. Like, how powerful an accent can be it could change your whole perception of like a genre or a thought process. Like, then I started wondering, like, what if you took something really smart and you set it in the, uh, or you took something, took something really smart and you set it in the southern twang, right? Like, what if Gandhi was from Arkansas? Does he have as many supporters? He just walks in here and he's like, an eye for an eye makes the whole world blind. <laughs> He'd be like, is Gandhi enlightened or has he had too much PBR? <laughs> <laughs> then I wondered if the opposite was true. If you had something like really, uh, really smart or really dumb and you added the, uh, the um, like a British accent, which sounds like, people say sounds like a more educated, would it take away from the message? Do you guys remember redneck jokes? Yeah, redneck jokes. So it's okay. I'm older than everybody here. I, uh, <laughs> so redneck jokes were the, the stereotypical jokes about Southerners. It's like, okay, what if you said those in a British accent? Have you ever mowed your lawn and discovered your car? <laughs> You'd be like, is that a redneck joke or a redneck fact? Because that <laughs> sounded like Wikipedia. <laughs> if, uh, if I really had to place the blame on why I am the way I am, it's, you know, might as well put it on mom, right? My mom's my best friend, don't get me wrong. Like, my mom's my best friend growing up. Uh, we did all the mom things together, you know? We, uh, we go to, uh, uh, we get uh, Manny Petties. Um, we'd watch soap operas together. We'd go to PTA meetings and talk shit about the other moms. <laughs> and it came from very different places. It was fun. She'd come up to me and she'd be like, Josh, Brenda's husband is cheating on her. And then I'd be like, uh, yeah, maybe because her PBJs suck. <laughs> maybe she cut the crust off like you do, mom. Mr. Brenda wouldn't have to stray. <laughs> My mom's fun, though. She's party mom. She, uh, she has a catchphrase. Most moms get a catchphrase, right? As a mom, you find one sentence that worked once and then you use it forever. Here's my mom's. My mom used to always say, I'm on vacation. And that's how I knew she was getting hammered. <laughs> like Merlot mom hammered, like beyond hammered. And I heard it my whole childhood too. Whole childhood, I'm Joshua, I'm on vacation. I am on vacation. I was always like, mom, we're at a Chili's, okay? <laughs> It's Tuesday, you work tomorrow. You work here tomorrow. Your manager looks pissed. <laughs> uh, but finally, now that, you know, world's opening back up, uh, girlfriend finally gets to meet my mom, which I'm pretty stoked on. Uh, she gets to meet the whole fam bam. I'm from like a huge family. Uh, I have four siblings, so I'm one of five. And those four siblings all have 11 children. 11 children, right? It makes me the last one in the family that can pull out. I don't know. Like, I don't. <laughs> it's half of sex, and they fail that half every si 11 times at least, right? I don't know. I think I'd be a good parent. Every non parent says that. I don't think I'm going to have kids, though, you know? Climate change, I don't need to add a 12th or anything. Uh, but the only thing I feel like I'm going to miss out on on having kids is all the cool, like, you get to re experience all the cool little kid stuff with the kids through your adult eyes, right? It's fun. Like right now, all my nieces and nephews, they're, all, they're watching the Land Before Time series. Remember that? Remember Land Before Time? Do you know how many there are? There are 14 Land Before Time movies. 14, even Marvel's like, yo, that's too many movies. And for me as an adult, I'm like watching all these movies and I'm like, okay, 14 Land Before Times. Yo, when are you gonna get to time? <laughs> you know, like 14, you haven't gotten to time. Either get to time or get to the asteroid, you know? <laughs> I'd watch that one. Right? Littlefoot, Ducky, a Triceratops inexplicably named Sarah. <laughs> 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 nice. Um, 
<laughs> her name's Sarah. She's like, representation. Uh, I feel like I learned most of my parenting skills actually from Tiger Woods. Like, not, okay, not him, obviously, but from his wife. Right, do you guys remember the first Tiger Woods incident from a long time ago, it's like 10 years ago, so if you don't know, Tiger Woods got caught cheating on his wife and then she attacked him with a golf club. Which is horrifying, but a little funny. It's a little funny, right? It'd be like if I cheated on my girlfriend, she strangled me with the mic cord, you know? Not so funny now, is it, right? But he's so lucky that she wasn't from America. He's so lucky she was Elin from Sweden, right? Because if she was Ellen from Florida, which is where he's from, she would have had a reality show immediately. Immediately, right? It would've, and it would have been golf themed. It would have been called like Teeing Up Again or Back Nine. <laughs> Out of the woods, right? Like, come on, that's it, that's it. That means it's 10th season by now. I don't want to say that my parents were like just drunk and bad at parenting. They were fine, like my dad actually had a few decent parent moves. Um, I remember one, he used to get mad about how much TV I watched with my mom, because he, he didn't like, I just hang out with my mom and we watch all kinds of stuff. Uh, he got mad that I would watch Sex in the City with her. And I always had to be like, Dad, don't worry, I'm only watching the city episodes. <laughs> but here's what he did. One day he was like, I, you know, I don't, if you're gonna watch as much TV as you do, here's what we're gonna do. We're, you're gonna turn on subtitles, and then you're gonna pick out three words that you don't recognize that you didn't know before, and then we'll go over the definitions when I get home. Right? Solid dad move. But unfortunately, I always like told on myself for still watching the stuff that I wasn't allowed to watch. Right? He would look at the words and just be like, all right, alimony, mediation, restraining order. Josh, were you watching Maury Povich again? <laughs> and I had been watching Maury Povich again. It was my favorite show to fake being sick and watch. <laughs> Miss Maury. They're in like season 50, right? And at some point along the way, they said, Maury was just like, no more trouble teens, no more geek makeovers. We're doing all paternity tests all the time, yeah. right? All the time. They knew where the ratings were. I just hope there was one brave PA at a production meeting that was like, Maury, what about the Make-A-Wish kids? And he was like, do they wish to know who their dad is? That's the only way they're getting on my show. I'm trying to be a good uncle, though, I'm trying to like contribute to all their stuff. You know, I. Uh, and that's the thing is like the reason I don't want to have kids is because like my nieces and nephews, like especially little girls, they're so mean, right? Little girls, I don't know if you guys know this, little girls are assholes. Yes, they're so mean. They're so mean, especially my little nieces, right? I remember one niece, she was like, Uncle Josh, how old are you? And I was like, I'm 34, sweetie, how old are you? She goes, I'm four. And I go, uh-huh, when are you gonna be five? She goes, uh, right after four. I was like, okay. <laughs> I am never talking to you again. <laughs> No, I'm not, I'm not that whack of an uncle. I do try to contribute, you know, I do try to bring parts of my childhood to their childhood, right? Land before time. I, uh, I also, I remember, what she, cause she's always on her iPad, I was like, no, you need to play some of these games that we played as kids. So I said, put out your arm. Circle, circle, dot, dot. Now you got your cootie shot. <laughs> and she had never heard of it before. They're not giving cootie shots anymore. <laughs> right? Just kids on the playground running around, unprotected from elementary school HPV. It's like, damn, anti-vax starts early. <laughs> but she wanted to play, right? Explain the rules that she wanted to play, so I put out my arm, and she was like, circle, circle, square, square. You have rectal cancer. I was like, what? <laughs> it's like, where did you learn that diagnosis? She's like, WebMD. I was like, give me your iPad. One thing I'm proud about of the world they're coming into is that, uh, you know, it's gonna be more progressive when they get older, you know, because I actually have a lot, I have like more nieces than nephews, so it's like I'm glad there's more progressive of a world for them to enter. And like, they're gonna enter into a world with gender neutral restrooms, which I think is important, but for selfish reasons. <laughs> one time I was in, this is a true story, one time I was in a, a restaurant in San Francisco and I left my iPad in the bathroom. It's not important why I had the iPad in the bathroom. <laughs> But I didn't, I, I didn't realize I left it there until the next day I was driving from San Francisco back to Los Angeles and I realized I lost it and I was pissed at myself. I was like, damn it, Josh, you've been losing stuff for like 35 years. You got, when are you gonna get locked in, buddy? Like, I didn't know Adderall existed back then. Um, but I was so mad, but then all of a sudden my phone rings from a call from my iPad. Turned, gender neutral restroom saved me. The guys at the restaurant were like, hey, two little girls use the bathroom after you and they turned in your iPad which could have only happened with those type of restrooms, right? Because little girls understand emotion better. 
and they know that it would feel bad <laughs> to lose your iPad. So they turned it in. Little boys would not have turned in my iPad. <laughs> They'd be looking at porn on my iPad right now, and it'd be the porn I look at, and they are not ready for that. <laughs> Need a couple more rock bottoms, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> It's the pegging videos. Uh, <laughs> I'm just making this guy the peg guy. Uh, his girlfriend's like, yeah. That's what I love about women at comedy shows, especially the ones in relationships, is that if, like, if I were up here doing a joke about like, little dicks, one girl would be like, babe. <laughs> Brutal. I am trying to give back, though. Before, uh, before everything slowed down, I, I did my best to every time I got paid, I would put away a little bit of money for, my, for their future, you know what I mean, just to help them out. But then when comedy stopped, I didn't have as much income, so I had to take on like odd jobs to be able to still do what I wanted to do like that, right? I actually found a job rehabilitating parrots that were owned by Trump supporters. What? Yeah, it was fulfilling work. <laughs> Right, we bring them to the facility and they're like, bah, stop this deal, bah, build the wall. <laughs> and then we cut off their access to Squawk's News. And pretty soon they're like, bah, trans people are people too, bah, Biden won legitimately, bah. That joke is called, I got high and remembered parrots. <laughs> they're still around, they're still real. But actually, you know there's people that don't think birds are real? Yeah. That's one of my favorite conspiracies to pop up over the last however many years. There are people that think birds aren't real, and they pop up out of nowhere, too. You'll just be talking to someone, think you got a new friend to relate to on like relationships, current events, maybe, and they're like, yeah, you know all birds were changed into surveillance by the government in 1985? And you're like, uh, what? What was that last part? <laughs> and, and I'm like, aren't birds just the like, latest dinosaurs? And they're like, don't get me started on the dinosaurs, you know? <laughs> Conspiracies are great, though. I think, I think conspiracies are fun. Are we a conspiracy family in here? Yeah, we're down with conspiracies. You nodded way quickly. Uh, <laughs> but no, it's great. I like them. I like conspiracies. They just get, they just get out of hand. Like, and you better be ready for conspiracies, everybody. Seriously, because they're here. They're here to stay. There's members of QAnon as members of Congress. Okay? I think the next Disney princess is a flat earther. Like, they are here <laughs> to stay. So you better be down with them. I'm, I'm a little more down with conspiracies lately. Just not the dude culture conspiracies. Right, the dude-based conspiracies, I don't like, because they're just so based in rage. They're all so mad. Guys, why are you so mad? Right, they're all, jet fuel can't melt this, and don't vaccinate your that, whoa. <laughs> so mad. In fact, they're so mad, do you know, so Flat Earth, that's one of the most popular conspiracies, there's a term that Flat Earthers have for the rest of us that believe in a round Earth. Do you know what it is? Or at least one of them. Globe cucks. <laughs> oh my god. I'm gonna repeat that, globe cucks. If you don't know what a cuck is, it's short for cuckold. If you don't know what a cuckold is, go home, Google it, and then throw away your computer. Seriously. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> the dude conspiracies, they're just so mad. That's why, again, I like the girl, the girl culture conspiracies so much more fun. But you don't see a lot of female conspiracy theorists, right? Not a lot of them say they're conspiracy theorists. There are female conspiracy theorists. They usually just say they're into astrology. <laughs> right? And I'm not making fun of it. I'm down with the astrology girls. I'm down with the space religion. Do not come after me. Because they're so locked in. The girls are so locked into their astrology. I used to try to mess with the astrology girls, right? I'd be talking to an astrology girl, and she asked the same question all of them ask after I said something. Oh, so what sign are you? And I'd be like, I'm a Leo. And she'd be like, I knew it. And I'd be like, I'm actually a Gemini. She was like, well, that's obvious because you're two-faced. I was like, oh my god. Are you my niece? You got me again. Holy. And it's like more than just your one out of 12 basic sign. Like you need to know more than that. All right, fellas, you need to know more than just your sign. You need to know your rising. You better know your moon sign, whether you're an indica or a sativa. <laughs> and if you don't know the exact time you were born, are you even ready for a relationship, dude? Like what the hell? Get out of this Wendy's right now. Girl culture conspiracy is so much more fun. The dude ones just get out of hand, right? Dude culture conspiracy has been getting out of hand since the first dude culture conspiracy. You guys remember the first dude conspiracy? The story of Jesus? <laughs> yeah, the girl ones are just so much more fun. Like, there's a, there's a girl culture conspiracy that suggests uh, Beyonce did not give birth to her first child, right? To protect her little bayhive. <laughs> there's another fun one that suggests Avril Lavigne died and they just replaced her with another Avril Lavigne. 
That's insane. Where did that even come from? First of all, they tried it 50 years ago with Paul McCartney. Okay, it's not a new development. Second of all, the people that believe in it, yo, you think they picked Avril? We've lost so many female pop stars, iconic pop stars over the last however many years, and you think they picked Avril Lavigne? <laughs> not Amy Winehouse, not Selena, not Aaliyah, they picked the skater girl. <laughs> all right, it's just a little weird to me, right? It's just a little weird to me. It's like if all the Kardashians died and then the Illuminati was like, let's bring back Rob. <laughs> He's got the biggest ass. <laughs> the wildest girl culture conspiracy is one where uh, there's one that suggests that John Bonet Ramsey did not die and that she grew up to be Katy Perry. <laughs> Insane, right? Super unlikely. Probably, probably not. Okay, probably not. But still more believable than Flat Earth, right? Because Flat Earth, we know. We know. We know. Greeks circumnavigated the globe. Uh, Christopher Columbus did not fall off the edge. All of the other planets are round. We know. <laughs> we know. But John Bonnet Ramsey, we still don't know. We still don't know. 30 years, six documentaries later, we still don't know. <laughs> right? Was it the parents? Was it the brother? Was it OJ? He was getting into shit like that in the 90s, right? <laughs> still don't know. That's why I think it's like that, that the, the Jesus Christ went like, that's the least believable dude conspiracy of them all, right? Okay, you turn water into wine? I don't know. What, was it Dasani, you know? <laughs> Your mom was a virgin? Okay. <laughs> and then you died, went into a hole, and came back three days later, and you're like this new and improved Jesus. So you Avril Lavigne Jesus. I don't know, man. I do not know. <laughs> but here's the thing about girl culture conspiracies is that they're fun to start, and they're easy to believe. I actually think we could start our own girl culture conspiracy tonight. There's enough people here. You guys ready? You guys ready to start a girl culture conspiracy? Here it is. We say, we all say, we all believe. We all believe. <laughs> we all believe that sometime over the last 10 years, the Olsen twins died. And then the girls got together to do a little moon ritual to create uh, uh, Elizabeth Olsen, because where did she come from? <laughs> where did Elizabeth Olsen, there's just a third Olsen the whole time, and she's an Avenger, that's not fair. There's a third Olsen and she's an Avenger, that is not fair. But I actually love Elizabeth Olsen because she has such extreme younger sibling energy. Right? Because she looked at her older siblings and was like, oh, you guys were in an iconic family sitcom in the 90s? Well, I'm going to make one division, and I'll be in an iconic family sitcom in every decade in human history. <laughs> it's like, Liz, calm down. I'm going to call you Liz. <laughs> okay. <laughs> My favorite part about that joke is I was warming up all these jokes over the last couple weeks, and uh, uh, I did that joke, and a girl comes up to me after, and she goes, actually, the Olsen twins, they're thriving. <laughs> okay. One of them survived Lyme disease, okay? And the other one has a successful fashion line. So put that in your little joke. <laughs> I was like, uh, this is great. <laughs> because I didn't know women could mansplain. And you really can do everything we can do, right? That is so impressive. Oh, I loved it. I am really stoked the world's opening back up. I can finally get back to my favorite thing to do. My favorite thing to do that is finally returning. I can finally do drugs with strangers. <laughs> I love doing drugs with strangers. One of my favorite things, right? Love doing drugs with strangers. And here's the thing about how much I enjoy drugs. I used to be really smart. <laughs> and then I did all the drugs and now I'm not as smart. It's still up there. I just don't know if I can get to it, <laughs> right? My file has been corrupted. <laughs> So the thing about the doing the drugs is I used to be really good at Jeopardy. I was like that kind of smart. I was good at Jeopardy, which is a weird flex. And instead of not doing the drugs anymore, I think they should make a drug Jeopardy, right? So I can still compete. <laughs> imagine drug Jeopardy on just all the drugs, you know, like, okay. So imagine Jeopardy on ecstasy. Okay, so I'm just up there on ecstasy. <sighs> And they're like, how do you feel about your answer, Josh? I'm like, I feel really good. <laughs> I feel so good. And they're like, it's actually wrong. I'm like, I still feel so good. Ugh. I start twerking to the Jeopardy theme, you know, da -na. <laughs> Cocaine Jeopardy would be intense. It's just always final Jeopardy. <laughs> they're like, what did you wait? It just says everything in all caps. <laughs> Psychedelic Jeopardy would be my, the one I would play all the time, right? I love psychedelics. I just imagine trying to, just like, you know, you're trying to play Jeopardy on what I call the galaxy flip, which is mushrooms and acid. <laughs> Sunglasses indoors, nobody knows. 
and I'm just tripping, right? <laughs> tripping super hard, trying to win, thinking I can use a lifeline to call God. <laughs> and finally, I'm like, Josh, it's your turn. I'm like, oh, uh, I'd like to buy a vowel. <laughs> and they're like, uh, that's not how you play this game? And I'm like, I'm so embarrassed. What is I'd like to buy a vowel? Ha! <laughs> Nobody knows, buddy. Keep it up. <laughs> Although marijuana jeopardy, marijuana jeopardy, I think, is something. We, uh, why isn't that already a thing? Why isn't marijuana jeopardy already a thing? We could do that. We can make marijuana jeopardy. Just imagine me up there, a couple dabs in, right? Trying to play jeopardy the highest I've ever been. And they're like, all right, Josh, for $1,000, this is where your phone is. <laughs> where is my pocket? <laughs> and they're like, wow, that's actually correct and in the form of a question? And I'm like, no, I'm so high. Where is my pocket? I have to find my phone. <laughs> Set the mood. I'm in high school. And there's a weekend where me and my sister both have food poisoning at the same time. So in the middle of the night, I get out of my bed to go throw up. I open the bathroom door, and my sister is naked in the bathroom, throwing up and shitting at the same time. <laughs> both and <laughs> like... <laughs> Obviously disgusting. <laughs> it stained my brain. Like I have never, like it's there, it's never going away. No, matter, no amount of drugs could get that memory out of my brain. <laughs> but remember, I'm like a young comedian in training. It's also the funniest thing I've ever seen in my entire life. So now I'm in the hallway of my childhood home laughing and throwing up at the same time. All over the hall, on the pictures of Nana, everywhere. <laughs> And all of a sudden, my stepdad, Tom, comes out of the room, which is a top five stepdad name, and he comes out of the room, and he's like, yo, Josh, what is going on? Dude, what, are you okay? What is on the walls? Josh, what is happening? What is going on? And I was just like, Tom, buddy, it's about to get so much worse. <laughs> and I went to sleep. Next morning, it was clean. Um, so then, a few weeks later, I'm obviously grounded for not helping clean up. And my mom, still my best friend, still has mom plans, right? She's trying to go on vacation. So she's trying to get me to get ready so I can go with her, because she doesn't want me at home, because I could just do cool stuff at home, you know, play video games, watch sex, and say, I could do whatever I want, you know? So she's, she's got the shower running. She's in a towel. This, again, 100% true story. She's in a towel, and she's screaming at me. And she's like, go get ready, Joshua. That's how I knew I was in trouble, right? Joshua, go get ready. And I was like, I'm not, no. <laughs> No, you know, like I'm not, it's not gonna happen. She's just the maddest I've ever seen her. Veins bulging, uh, face redder than ever. And she's in a towel because she was about to go take a shower and she's just screaming at me. I've never seen, and to this day, I've never seen her this mad. And she's screaming at me. And all of a sudden, a little red drop starts to trickle down her thigh. And then she just goes, look what you did. <laughs> I was like, all right, mom, I didn't pay a ton of attention in health class. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's not how it works, right? <laughs> and I think she thought it would scare me. I thought I had a superpower, you know? <laughs> like, I always wanted to be an X-Men. Now I was an X-Men stroll, you know? Like, I got it. And she's been married four times. She dated a lot, you know? Like, she could have, I would have used that superpower. She'd have been like, honey, it's date night. I'd be like, uh, no, it's not. <laughs> it's chocolate chip cookies, sex in the city again, you know? <laughs> Let's do that. Guys, those are the jokes. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for listening. Obviously, those last two stories are uh, insane. So we need a palate cleanser. I'm actually going to bring Luke back up here. Uh, welcome, Luke Noel, back to the stage, everybody. Thank you. Wait, where's my, where's my wig? I want to thank Yard and See, uh, Fruit Smash. Give it up for yourselves for being here. I thank you so much. I am really stoked. I feel good. I haven't smoked weed in a week, which means inside I'm going crazy. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so uh, last year at the, in the middle of the pandemic, I, I love uh, parody songs, so I wrote my own parody songs. I used to have a band called Electric Blanket because we have the hottest covers. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, I've never used this word. So yeah, so I actually wrote a parody of a... Uh... Throw on the hat. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. I have a costume as well. <laughs> so I wrote this parody of uh, Part of Your World from uh, The Little Mermaid. 
and it's a um, quarantine party. It's called Out of Quarantine. And uh, please bear with me. This is legit the first time I've performed it live, so please bear with me. Um, Be nice. <laughs> thank you, Luke. Okay. <clears throat> Remember, this was written like in the heart of the pandemic, so the lyrics match that vibe, okay? okay? What if they're right? What if the US is built on systemic oppression? I just don't get how a, an administration that disbanded an entire pandemic response team could let things get so bad. Another month in quarantine. Was hoping by now that they'd have the vaccine. The U.S. is supposed to be great. I thought we had everything. <laughs> Healthcare's a mess. Will there be enough tests? Don't you dare blame the case spikes on social unrest. Looking around here, you'd think, wow, everything is fucked. Billionaires, they do not want to help us. Elon Musk, he does not give a fuck. You want embarrassing stains on the fabric of American society for the rest of time? We got plenty. No one cares in Washington. They just want more. I just want to be where any people are. Like countries with leaders that trusted science. New Zealand just got back to, what's that word again? Oh, sports. <laughs> Sitting at home, you don't get much done. I'm tired of choosing between porn and Twitter. Scrolling through both makes me, what's that word again? Sad. Out where they hug, out where they five, out where they're anywhere but inside within six feet. Wish we could be out of quarantine. Just wear a mask or this will last well past the new year. Is it really worth it spreading COVID cause you went to brunch? Staying inside would have been just fine if they gave us more than $1,200 once. Other countries didn't do this. Now cases surge. I'm ready to know how Bill Gates is involved. How the vaccine and 5G have made him Skynet. Afraid to be tracked, yet you carry a, what's the word? Phone. <laughs> so bitch, don't bitch and moan, just vote in. A president who cares more about Americans than Russians. Looks like to me, we'll never be out of quarantine. Thank you so much, everybody. Give it up for yourselves, for Luke, for all the performers you saw tonight. I thank you so much for being here, but we have a second show that we have to get to, so if you could expeditionally get the fuck out. Thank you so much, seriously. Follow me on Instagram, Josh Waldron sucks. I'll be releasing it as soon as my editor stops smoking weed. Thank you so much, guys. There are trash cans in the back. If you could please help us by throwing away the trash cans. Thank you, guys. Have a good night. Get on safe!